Now let's look at the curved arrows in multi-step reaction mechanisms. Each step represents one pattern of curved arrows, sometimes two. First we'll look at the SN1 substitution of bromide on 3,3-dimethyl-2-butanol. Don't worry about this notation. We will learn that later. Here is our starting material, 3,3-dimethyl-2-butanol. Let's draw in the lone pairs on the oxygen. Now, the hydroxyl group is a terrible leaving group. But if we do proton transfer, say, from hydrobromic acid, we can make a protonated alcohol with the water as a good leaving group. There is our first step, proton transfer. It gives us two curved, or it uses two curved arrows, and it transfers a proton from the acid to the base, giving us a protonated alcohol. Now, the hydroxyl group was a bad leaving group. The water is a good leaving group. Of course, bromide is also produced in this reaction. The first reaction arrow we will record as step one, proton transfer. Now that we have a good leaving group, step two will be loss of the leaving group. One curved arrow from the sigma bond to the leaving group. In principle, this should be a double-headed arrow. So we get a secondary carbocation plus water, which was our leaving group. That is step two of our reaction. Loss of a leaving group. Can we rearrange this carbocation? Sure we can. Right now it's secondary. If we take one of these methyl groups on the adjacent carbon and do a 1,2 methide shift, we'll end up with a tertiary carbocation. This reaction arrow for step three, rearrangement, must be drawn in one direction because rearrangements are not reversible. So we've moved the methyl group to the carbon on the left, which moves the positive charge to the carbon on the right. Now, we still have a bromide ion that was produced in the first step. That can perform nucleophilic attack on our carbocation. resulting in this product. So step four was nucleophilic attack. Note that I've drawn this with a double-headed arrow because nucleophilic attack is reversible when the nucleophile is also a good leaving group, as bromide is. For SN2 reactions, you'll have two patterns, nucleophilic attack and loss of a leaving group in one step. For the example, I've chosen 1-chloropropane reacting with hydroxide. The hydroxide ion is a good nucleophile. The chloride ion is a good leaving group. Arrow number one is nucleophilic attack. 
arrow number two is loss of a leaving group. Our product here is one propanol and a chloride ion. The reaction pictured happens by two steps. The first is proton transfer, and the second combines loss of a leaving group with nucleophilic attack. Can you draw the set of curved arrows for this reaction, including the intermediates? Go ahead and pause your video and give it a try. Have you got it figured out? Start off by drawing in your lone pairs. We're going to do proton transfer from the HBr to the alcohol to give us a better leaving group. Now we have water, which is an excellent leaving group. And of course, we also made a bromide ion when the HBr lost a proton. Now the bromide ion is going to attack at the nucleophilic carbon, excuse me, the electrophilic carbon, and the water will go away as a leaving group. So you can see step one, that was proton transfer. We transferred a proton to the alcohol because hydroxide is a poor leaving group and the resulting water is a good leaving group. Then the bromide can attack at the electrophilic carbon and cause the water to leave. For step two, which combines both nucleophilic attack and loss of a leaving group. And in principle, the reaction arrow for step two should be a double arrow because it is reversible.